Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon or morning, evening for those of you joining us from another time zone. I'm Lindsay and my colleague Katie and I will be running today's webinar called CK12 for Math and Science Teachers. We have lots to cover today, but before we get into the core content, I'd like to go over a few logistics about the Zoom webinar platform. You should see two different options on your Zoom screen, one for Q&A and one for chat. During today's presentation, whenever you have a question about CK12, please post it in the Q&A window. We will pause for a Q&A session after each major topic to address any questions that have been submitted. The chat window is a place for community conversation. I think you guys have already started that. Um, we would love for you all to introduce yourselves. If you're an educator, feel free to share your state, or country, uh, your district, or subjects you teach. Just make sure in the chat window that you're sending any general posts to all panelists and attendees, not just to CK12 or panelists. So you need to adjust that in your chat window to say all panelists and attendees to make sure everybody can see your message. Also, while we don't anticipate any technical issues during our broadcast, if you're having any trouble with your video or your sound, please let us know in the Q&A or chat window. So now that we've gone over a couple of logistics, it would be great if we found out a little bit more about you. We're gonna launch a poll here in just a second that's gonna prompt you to respond to two short questions. Okay, so you should see this on your screen now. The first question is to get an idea of how long you've been using CK12. The second question is asking how familiar you are with CK12's tools and resources. And knowing the answer to both of these is gonna help us tailor this webinar and deliver the most relevant content to you. So for the first one, you should be answering, how long have you been using CK12? Pick one answer. And then notice that for the second question, you can choose all of them that apply. So we'll see. Katie, are you there? Are you monitoring these results as they're coming in? Yeah, we have about 60% of you guys have put your answers in. So we'll give you a few more seconds to kind of get those in there. I know there's a lot of check options in the second question. Um, so we want to make sure you all have a moment to fill that out. So we'll give you another few seconds and then kind of share those results with you. Awesome. We have just a few more people left. I still see that number ticking up, so I'm just gonna give you another few seconds to finish answering, um, and then we'll share those with you. Okay, so if anyone else has any last things, click submit there, and then let's see what you guys had to say. So hopefully you can all see this little poll results piece. Um, it looks like a lot of you guys are either brand new to the website or have been using it maybe just this school year, so less than a year, and we have a couple of veterans mixed in. So hopefully you guys will get some extra skills as we go through. Um, and then not surprisingly, a lot of us, people know us as a flexbook company, so that kind of core curriculum in our textbooks. Um, but definitely it's great to see that some other people have been using our interactives and some of the other resources, including our practice. So we'll definitely get a chance to go through all of those as we work our way through this webinar. So with that, let me pass this back to Lindsay to introduce you to CK12 for all of you newbies. Yeah, great. That's a great blend of people. I think this is a webinar that um, those of you who are brand new, I don't think we're going to overwhelm you here. We're going to walk you through a lot of our tools. And then those of you who are more familiar with parts of our website, we're going to be sharing some great teaching strategies for how you can better utilize the tools in your classroom. So um, before we get into the, to the content, I do like to remind everybody who we are as an organization. Um, we're the CK12 Foundation, founded in 2007. Uh, we are a leading nonprofit organization dedicated to improving student learning by increasing access to educational materials through the Flexbook platform and concept-based modalities. 
ZK12 offers free, high quality, standards aligned, open content through an integrated set of tools for learning, including digital textbooks, concept-based learning resources, simulations, interactive practice, and more. And like I said, we give it all away for free. Our core content and curriculum is for middle school and high school math and science with some K through five math practice and videos. However, with the addition of donated resources and user created content, you'll also be able to find books for other subjects and levels, especially related to social studies and to language arts. Although we offer our content for free, when you use a CK12 resource, you can trust that it's the highest quality. CK12 is used across the world by students, teachers, and districts because it is the best content, not because it is free. We visit schools all the time, including those who aren't bound by any budget constraints, and they use CK12 because they know it's what's best for student learning. Our content has been developed by over 100 people with PhDs, um, professors, teachers, authors, NASA scientists, and other subject matter and domain experts over the past 10, 11 years. Our content is accessible. We've worked hard to make all of our content available across every platform in both print and digital format. And our global impact is incredible with over 15 million active users. I think that's a monthly total represented in over 200 countries worldwide. So let's start talking specifics about today's content. Thanks, Lindsay, for that introduction to CK12. And thanks to everyone who joined us today. So as you guys saw, we had a bunch of different people kind of in terms of level and understanding of what we offer. Um, so with that in mind, we're going to focus specifically on the strategies for using CK12 with students and colleagues. You'll see kind of little pieces of CK12 hinted at or shown in short demo pieces. Um, but rather than drilling down on the specifics, we really want to focus on strategies. Um, don't worry, for all of you new to our webinars, we're going to answer any questions you might have. You can start tossing those in the Q&A window at any point that you want during this webinar. Um, and we'll be sure to stay on and demo anything in nitty gritty detail if you want that level of resource updates. Um, but the strategies that we're gonna be talking about today are gonna be related to the following three topics. So the first is this idea of concept-based learning and flexbooks. So our bite-sized chunks of content that's supported with a variety of modalities and is kind of aligned with our full concept textbooks. The next part is the idea of strategies you can use when you're customizing our content. So that's one of the cool parts about CK12 is that you can tailor our content and content from other users to meet your needs specifically. And then finally, class groups and assignments. So creating assignments and seeing student progress, as well as integrating with learning management systems um, so that we can kind of show you what that looks like and how you work. Um, and it looks like we got a question about what are Flexbooks. We will go through those specifically in the very beginning or the middle part of our webinar as we talk through them as well. Okay, well, maybe let's give everybody a, a high level overview of what this looks like in the context of a classroom. Um, I have a one and a half minute clip here of a teacher named Chris Pickens, and he uses CK12 Flexbooks and Plicks and simulations to differentiate learning in his sixth grade classroom in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. So this will give you some ideas straight off the bat here. I guess started with CK12 as our school district went through an adoption this is our CK-12 rocket simulation that we're gonna be working on today. The level of engagement with the Chromebooks and the CK-12 is just amazing. It's, it's changed my career. I think the students can sense that. Uh, I, I'm excited to come into school every day because I'm learning something new every day. I didn't realize that something this simple as a Chromebook um, and some online textbooks could change the way that I teach that much, but it's been pretty much a door that has opened that I can't close anymore. But I can tell you, this is a certainly a lot more exciting way to teach. The level of engagement with the kids is phenomenal. I can have a variety of students doing a variety of different things. I can have advanced students working on things. I can have students on IEPs working on things, all in the same class, where in years past, when somebody would ask me to do some of those things, I was like, what, I can't do all that. I can't record all that. Everybody's gonna do the same thing. 
With CK12, I can have a variety of assignments going at the same time, in the same class. I'm not stressed. The students aren't stressed because it's they're kind of getting some instruction at their level. And so I just think everybody's much happier to come into class. Students should be leaving school saying, oh, that was fun. Thanks, Lindsay. So what you guys saw there were a bunch of different modality types. And that's something that kind of comes up in addition to the Flexbook question. Um, and you know, those are our textbooks that you can customize. What are all these different modality types that you might have seen in this video or seen within CK12? Um, so we enrich every one of our concepts with a variety of modalities that include text. So that might be a read from one of our textbooks or what we call our flexbooks, um, videos, our interactive math and science PLICS, which stands for play, learn, interact, and explore, our physics and chemistry simulations, our various activities that we have kind of mixed in as well, and then our adaptive practice, which we'll cover in depth in this webinar as well, and then real world applications and study guides. So these are all different modality types or ways that a student might be able to learn and work through exploring a particular concept. So the question then is, okay, all of these are on CK12. Where do you find these and where can you start? So when you go to ck12.org, you're gonna find an educational platform that provides standards aligned STEM resources primarily, um, and they can be accessed anytime, anywhere, and on any device for free. As you can see and saw in that video, there are a ton of resources on CK12. So when trying to approach the best way to access those resources, let's talk about the question that you wanna answer first. So I usually, when I work with educators, ask what's your goal? Is your goal kind of, and that helps where to start, and then as a way to access the resources based on that. So the first option is, are you looking for resources related to a particular topic or topics? Are you teaching something in your class and you need to access material directly related to that topic? The other option is, are you looking for a type of resource? So are you looking to enhance across your curriculum with different interactives or practice um, or various kind of full curriculum and options there? So those are the two different ways that, that you can kind of approach. And with those goals in mind, we'll talk about different ways to access and use our resources and the strategies from there. So with that, I'm actually gonna steal the screen from Lindsay. I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna go into CK12. And before I do that, I'm gonna share one thing in the chat window. So I just shared a link to a Google Doc um, that has a list of all of the strategies that we're gonna be covering today so that you don't have to worry about taking notes and saying, oh, I think she just said another one. They're all there for you. I would just recommend copying that um, link, but we'll also send it in a follow-up email tomorrow um, with access to the recording of the webinar and all of these other pieces that you might want as reference in the future. So let's dive down into some of these strategies and what you can do within CK12. So, Let's say you're working to try to find strategies related to a topic. So you're teaching a particular topic like heat and temperature. So one way to go about doing that is just to search for that content. I could search for heat, temperature, and thermal energy. So if you know what you wanna study, that's a great place to start. And then a strategy that could go with this is that I could actually click on this concept so that concept is that skill that we're looking for, this idea of heat and temperature. Um, and then I could have students each pick a different modality type. So as we showed you, these are all different modality options, that read, that simulation, the interactive, there's a video and some practice, a real world application. And if each kid or maybe group of students takes a different one, they could explore it, they could come up with a set of notes for their group, and then you can meet together as a class and say, okay, well, what are the big ideas that we saw across these different modality types? What is this topic really trying to teach us? And how can we use that to understand the larger picture? And then maybe if there's a piece that they're missing, you could say, okay, well, the read might be a great place to go look up a couple definitions that we missed as a class. Um, but hopefully whatever group took that will have those materials to share with their classmates as well. Now, just a note, kind of what we're going to try to do as we bounce through this is share both the strategy and a couple of resources. If I go back one step to that search result, 
in addition to the grades, you can actually filter down. And if you didn't want the whole concept, you could choose to filter by type of resource or by type of modality. So that's kind of that opposite piece. Maybe you want both the topic and a type of resource, and you could use that search feature that way. So another option is to say, okay, let's go back to our homepage. This green and orange logo I love because it takes me back to the homepage and I can find what I'm looking for. And another teaching strategy might be to use CK12 as a pre-lesson. So let's say that I wanted to browse. I could, maybe I was teaching arithmetic. Now here, you'll see both our concepts page and our flexbook page. And so that tab will go to, in a little bit, this one right here. Um, but right now we're gonna stick to kind of the idea of concepts as a whole. And if you look down here, you'll see the large topics for arithmetic. And then I could go into any particular one. So let's say I wanted to do one on integers. And all of these teal concept titles are actually links that we could work with. So I could go into one, let's say integers in the real world. And that would bring me to the same concept page for this particular concept, just like I got for the one on heat and temperature. And so here I could say, maybe as homework the night before, I want you to explore integers in the real world, try some stuff out, depending on the way you like to learn and what you wanna do, mix and match and figure out what that looks like. And then when we get into class tomorrow, we can actually go into the nitty gritty of that particular topic. So using this as a resource to have students look at it before you actually go into the lesson might be an option. Katie, we had somebody ask, um, can you show one more time how to get to this concept page that you're talking about? Sure. Yeah, so let me click once again from the home page. So if you sign into CK12 um, or if you just go straight to CK12, you'll either end up on that home page, which is you can always reaccess with our logo, or if you log in, you'll often end up on your dashboard. So if you end up something that looks like this, if you're logged in, you can see recently viewed, but just go back to the home page with our CK12 logo. Um, and I can go down there and then I can pick one. So let's pick a different topic here. So maybe we'll pick chemistry as another option. So if I go to chemistry, I could go into different options. I could look at matter and change. I could pick a different topic here, matter, mass, and volume. And that would once again take me to that concept page with the different resources that are available. Did that answer the question there? Um, it did, but we just got one um, as far as uh, I'm sure learning management systems are going to come up several times during this webinar. Um, can a concept page be attached as an assignment in a learning management system? So it, you can, so there's kind of two answers to that. So um, if you, every single one of our URLs on our website are unique. So if I'm looking at a concept page, you can see up here, it says ck12.org slash C for concept, it's in the branch of chemistry, and then matter, mass, and volume. So I could share that in an assignment within another learning management system, or I could use this little share me option right here, and then I could share this concept. That simply shares the content. If you're looking to assign that content within a learning management system, um, you're gonna wanna do a couple of different things, and we'll talk about assignments a little more at the end, kind of third part of this webinar, but the short version is that you can assign within CK12 or from CK12 to Google Classroom. And then in some other learning management systems like Schoology or Canvas, if you um, connect CK12 to that learning management system on the back end, you can assign these modalities, but you would need us to assign them separately if you wanted a score report on how your students were doing. Um, so if I wanna make sure that the students read this particular topic, I would actually wanna assign that particular topic. So if I went in there, I could click this nice bright orange assigned to class option, or I could access it from within a learning management system and do the same thing. Um, okay, so, yeah. but getting us back on track here, if you were just showing that you could search by topic, um, and then I think, are you gonna show them how to search by our Common Core and NGSS browser? Yeah, so as a teacher, so make sure if you're looking for standards that you're logged in as a teacher. So if I go back to the homepage as a teacher, I have the option to access our standards browsers. Students don't see that option up there, um, generally because they don't care what numbered standard they're working on, they care more about the topic, um, and they have some other options for schools there. But I could go into Common Core Math here, and then this gives you the standards browser from this particular option. So let's say you were actually trying to hit a particular standard and work through different things. I could go through this for math, 
I could do the same thing for science. So if I click back on standards here, and I want chose next generation science, I could actually go into any one of these topics as well. And what it does is it gives you the standard piece there, and then it gives you the actual concepts. And so if I pick on a concept like eclipses, it takes me to the concept page again, knowing that that particular set of content relates directly to the standard. Um, now that's content wise, just as a heads up, we are working on a series of updated common core and next generation science standard. Um, so math and science interactive resources that we'll preview a bit as we go through this. Um, but this at least is a place for you to start. And from here, another great strategy is to have students maybe pick a concept. So if we went back um, just a bit to these standards, maybe you want to have each student pick a different concept within here, and then they can make a video that was related to that. Um, and you can even add that so that other users could access that material as well. And then the last piece that I want to talk about is, let's say I'm in any one of these concepts here. This concept map is a great planning resource. So if I click on the concept map, it takes me, and what we've done is we've actually connected all of the concepts within CK12. Um, and you can do that for the concept you're looking for, or you can pick another concept. So let's say I wanted to teach scientific notation. That particular concept is a great one that spans both math and science. And I could even go through and I could say, OK, well, if I was teaching it in arithmetic, where else does that go? We have other scientific notation pieces, maybe scientific method and biology. And it will keep expanding. And you can use this resource to either plan with um, a colleague in a different department or help you plan a unit as you're working your way through. So all sorts of different options. So but, where, where do you find the concept map on our site was a question. So you can find that on any of our concept pages. So I'm in a concept page and there's this nice little concept map in the top right. Um, and you can also, if I just go to a particular branch, so let's say I'm teaching earth science, I can then click on this option for the concept map as well up in that top right. And that will take me to the same page. And then it gives you some recommended resources or concepts within that um, subject area as a great place to start. So. Those are great options and strategies that might be helpful if you're looking to teach a particular type or a particular concept to your students or a series of concepts. The other option might be that you're looking to incorporate resources that are a specific type of resource. Um, so let's say I go back to our homepage again and we had a question about flexbooks. So if I go down here to let's say biology, and once again, our concepts can all be found on that first tab. And then if I click on the Flexbook textbook tab, I see that option on the right side here. Now, you'll see a bunch of different options. The ones that have concepts in them are the ones that are directly tied to our concept pages. And I can see languages as well, English or Spanish. I could go down there and see that. But I want to go into a particular concept because we have a highlighting and note taking tool that some of our teachers love to use. So if I go into this concept, I could actually highlight and say, common parts of cells, we have a microscope, what might be something useful to highlight? The cell theory. So that's something I probably want to pay attention to. And I can highlight it. I can even add a note to that. So remember the cell theory. Probably want to add some notes from here as well. But any notes that I take, I will find at the bottom of my text in our notes and highlight section. So a great strategy for students to be interactive as they read is to actually request that they take notes and do highlights on this content while they're on CK12. And then another option if you're using kind of flexbooks or content reads as your basis for the resources you're looking for, once again, I'm going back to that homepage. And as a teacher, if I scroll down a bit, I'll see a series of circles. And the schools page is awesome. So we're based out in California, but right now I'm actually gonna work out in Massachusetts so I could switch out to Massachusetts. Or let's say I'm teaching in Florida. So Florida's a great one, if I can get my alphabet correct there, um, where you have other schools in the area that have taught and actually customize their own content. So that's why we call them flexbooks, so that's that customization piece. Um, but I can see all of those. And you'll see down here at the bottom, Polk County is a great resource 
they've actually created a bunch of elementary content for science, um, their third grade science book, and some of those other resources. So we actually now have elementary science, but those are some great options to kind of think about if you're looking for resources outside of STEM. Um, and then just a couple more thoughts kind of as we go through different parts. Here I could go through and I could use our interactives. So you can access our simulations here. And we're going through kind of the different parts of CK12 really quickly to focus on the strategy, but feel free to explore more or ask us more as we go. And if I go here and I click on our simulation, I can explore this and do these different pieces. But this, either our simulations or our Plex interactives are great as a warm-up for a class or as an exit strategy. So I used to teach pre-calculus. This is a physics simulation, but it talks about projectile motion. So I could start my class by projecting this on the board, having kids access it and try it out and say, okay, well, what are the different components that fit in here that might be helpful as we go through here? For you science teachers, one of our science team members who did a lot of our physics simulations loves how a lot of these are able to dispel some misconceptions in science. So definitely check out those as well. And then another option, we go back to CK12 and I look at the other types of interactives. A lot of our clicks, as we go through here, I could go through and I could open kind of any one of these different pieces and as it works its way through, our questions, you'll see kind of a way to interact with different parts, and then questions. And our last question, if you worked your way through here, is a discussion question. And so that might be a great journal assignment. You could have students address it in uh, one of our forums or in a Q&A for a class. Um, and just as a last note, kind of in terms of type of resource, that last circle on there is our adaptive practice. And I'm going to save going into that for the third part of this webinar. So. Let's just pause for two seconds and see if there's any other questions that have come up while we sped through a bunch of different types. And then Lindsay will go through a bit more on customizing content. Yeah, we do have some questions. And just a logistics thing um, for you attendees, if you don't mind, if you have a question that you want to make sure doesn't get lost in the shuffle and you want us to answer, type it in the Q&A window. Um, I'm, I'm going back through the chat now, but um, it's easier for us to kind of go question by question and we can even respond via text if you put your questions in the Q&A window. Um, but kind of cleaning out the chat here, um, Katie, there were a couple questions when you talked about notes. Um, one question was, does my teacher, do my teacher notes show for kids? And then the second question was, can the students print or save their notes as in turn into the teacher as a homework assignment? So I think talking about your highlighting and notes that you talked about. Yeah, so um, the highlighting and note taking are per account. So your notes you see and their notes they see. Um, at this point in time, there's not there. I mean, you could screenshot them and print them out from there. Um, we have had that request. I would say if that's something that you think would be super helpful for your class to email support at ck12.org or reply to our email when we send stuff out following up. Um, and let us know that that's something that you're looking for um, in terms of turning in notes or turning in uh, or being able to print them in a clean way. Um, we have a really, really small team and the more we get requests for specific parts, the higher priority they take as we choose what we develop next. Um, so right now they're per account, but they're definitely an option for you to just kind of screenshot them and print them out at this point in time. Okay, then don't move your screen because you're on the part to answer a couple questions here. Uh, somebody was asking how to get to Plix and how to get to the schools page. And there are lots of ways to get, get anywhere on our site, but I personally, I like the view that Katie's at right now where you can see these big circles underneath Explore that are you know, shifting in front of our eyes where that's an easy way to access the simulations, the Plix, our adaptive practice, and the schools. So um, Katie, maybe show again, like you click on the clicks to access the clicks and then the, um, this will take you to the browse page where you can search by branch. Um, you can see the concepts related to the clicks. Um, it's also ck12.org slash clicks, I believe. Um, and then ck12.org slash schools or the schools icon. Um, this will show up if you are logged in as a teacher. Um, you can click on the schools page and that takes you to where you can sort by location and see some of the schools who have elected to have their materials published on there. 
Um, so a couple others, um, specifically about the Plix and interactives, Katie, can, the question is, is are they able to be used on all devices, including phones and iPads? Um, so you can't use our interactives on a phone only because the screen size is too small for those. Um, if you have kind of a mini tablet and above, so a seven and nine inch screen size horizontally is usually the smallest size that you can fit them on just because there's too many moving parts. Um, but they're device agnostic otherwise in that if you have an iPad or a tablet, um, you want to use them on a Chromebook or a laptop, those are all options. Everything else except our interactives are also available at the level of a phone, either via a browser or using one of our apps. Okay, and then um, another kind of question suggestion I think that's in the Q&A is, have you considered adding video clips of a teacher doing the activities on your site to help teachers conceptualize how somebody else may teach the activity? Um, I don't know if you're talking about the specific modality that we call an activity or just more videos like the one we showed of Chris Pickens. Um, one place that I might refer you to is down in our footer, we do have um, testimonials where again, our team goes out and we meet with educators and we film what's going on in the classroom. And these are kind of, you know, most of them are a minute or two sound bites on different topics from administrators and teachers um, discussing, you know, their situation and how they're using CK-12. Um, if you go to our YouTube channel too, Katie, you don't have to go to it, but if you go to our YouTube channel, ck12.org, you'll, you'll find some other kind of feature videos on some of our teachers as well. But we're going to continue to develop that. Um, it's really the past year and a half or so that we've started to go into schools and, and get a lot of footage because we know how helpful that is for you guys. Um, and in fact, I think I'm going to steal the screen back here and um, I'm going to show you another video. Um, Katie briefly referenced um, that you can, hang on, I'm trying to press too many buttons. Um, Katie briefly referenced that you can translate um, our site um, by going down to uh, the Google Translate button and change it into different languages. And uh, I, I knew that this was a capability, but I never really thought of how impactful this could be in a district with um, with parents. So I'm going to let um, Dr. Cynthia Ontiveros, who's from El Paso Unified School District in, um, in Texas, uh, tell you a little bit about that. So. And Lindsay, I don't, I just showed the where you can find that Google Translate because okay. I think I'm still sharing my screen. So we're going to just make sure you steal it back. I'm stealing it. Let's see. You guys should be seeing my screen in just one second. Okay. Cynthia Ontiveros, coming up. I met a parent who was struggling with um, supporting his daughter um, because he did not speak English very well. So I, sh I brought up the CK-12 on my iPad. I quickly showed him how he can change the language and he was nearly in tears and he felt just so excited that now that he could help his daughter which was emotional for me too knowing that this is what CK-12 is about this is what we want our parents our language learners no matter where they come from no matter what language they speak they need to find a place in our classroom and CK-12 helps us to do that so that's an example of one of those um, testimonials that you can find on our testimonials page if you guys wanted to, to find other other comments um, from different districts. Um, we're gonna switch gears a little bit here. And you know, Katie, Katie gave you the lay of the land and showed you how to navigate our site and find different resources. And I'm gonna talk specifically about our Flexbooks and how you can customize them. Um, so let's see. Uh, one thing that I wanna tell you up front. Um, is it going to be about our CC by NC license? And I'm going to show you how we can rename, reorder, delete, add, edit current content within our Flexbooks. And then also going to briefly touch on user generated content as well. So um, our license is the Creative Commons Attribution Non Commercial 3.0 license. You are able to adapt and share content on our site as a result of this license. Um, you can find out more about the specifics of this license, including usage and giving appropriate credit on our site or through Creative Commons. Um, but just do be aware that we are license compliant and this is what makes the whole thing work. 
So with that, I'm going to go live now and um, I am going to share my screen and talk to you about Flexbooks. Okay, so you guys should see we are back on the home page here. Um, many of you are probably considering using one of CK12's Flexbooks as part of your core curriculum. And you are welcome to use any of our books as is, but it's very easy to make changes to our books and customize for your state or your country, the local standards, your own community. Um, we work with many districts who create a common curriculum for departments and grades, and this is a great strategy not only for the cost savings of our free flex books versus a, a very expensive, outdated traditional textbook, but this can lead to enhanced collaboration and fantastic professional development as well. Uh, plus, like we said earlier, our Flexbooks can be pushed to various platforms and devices, including our offline reader. So your teaching materials aren't stuck on a drive or in filing cabinets. It's all in one place and accessible by everyone. So I'm gonna briefly walk you through the process of selecting a book, pressing customize, and making a few basic edits to the book. If you decide later on that you're gonna get more serious about editing a Flexbook and you need more comprehensive instructions and demonstrations, we recommend that you join us for our introductory Flexbooks webinars that we're gonna be running this summer. Or you can always check out one of our archived webinars and we have one called Flexbooks 101, which will talk you through editing in a more comprehensive way. All right, so. You guys know all this now because Katie just walked you through it, but I am on our homepage and I am logged in as a teacher. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select a book that I wanna edit today. So I'm gonna go in the math section here and I am going to choose geometry. And when I click on geometry, Katie showed you earlier how you can go through our concepts and land on our concept page with modalities. Well, I want you guys to notice that there's another tab over here that says Flexbook Textbooks. So within the geometry branch, I'm gonna look at what textbooks we have for geometry. And there's gonna be lots of different options. There are some geometry flexbooks for middle school, but I'm looking for one that is for high school. So I'm gonna click on high school over here. Um, you'll notice that our Flexbooks, they, we have some in, in Spanish. Um, we also have leveled textbooks, basic, at grade, advanced. I'm looking for a specific one right now because um, we're really proud of our new interactive geometry book for the Common Core. And so I'm going to click on this one today. And this is the one I'm going to be using to make a few edits. So again, I can use this book as is. I could take this book as a teacher, put it in the hands of my students, and start using it in the order that CK12 developed it. But what, what fun is that? You know, I want to be able to customize it and rearrange things in a way that's going to work for me. So when you find a book that you want to work with, what starts the whole process is coming over here on the left hand side and clicking the customize button. Okay. When I click customize, a copy of the CK12 book is going to go into my library. Okay, it's going to be mine. Everything I'm doing it to, to everything I'm doing to the book now is going to be for me and my library. Um, one thing that I can do is I can always rename this book. So I can call it something really cool like Lindsay's CK12 Interactive Geometry for CCSS book. You can change the image of your book. You know, you can you can customize it with with the title and the cover. Next, one of the, the best things to do, I think, when you get started with a book is to edit the table of contents to match your scope and sequence. That's the amazing part about a customizable digital textbook is that you're in control of the content and what order it appears in your book. You'll notice that all of these chapters, there is a handle over here that says rearrange and I can drag and drop any of these chapters and put them in any order that I like. I'm just randomly shuffling. Not the most effective, I'm sure. Um, the next thing that I can do is I can delete chapters. Um, you know, your students aren't stuck with a giant textbook where you're only gonna cover a quarter of it. 
you are able to delete chapters. If you're not gonna get to circles, remove circles. If you're not gonna get to constructions, remove constructions. You can fully customize your book with just a few clicks, okay? Um, you take control over what you present to the students. You can reorder it. Um, on this add content button over here, this is where you can add content easily from CK12. Um, I'm in a lot of classrooms these days that are using blended instruction and, and they're pulling from, you know, maybe two or three different CK12 books to create their own book. You can search CK12 and add in our content here. You can also start your own chapter and write your own materials to customize for your needs, okay? This kind of customization is also a great opportunity to personalize reading material. You can make some tweaks to the reading levels. Um, and again, you can throw in some of our content that is leveled at basic, advanced, or at grade level. All right, so that's, that's a few things about maybe how you'd wanna start with your table of contents. Um, I can save this, and like I said, it's gonna go into my library. And let's pick something, let's go to basics of geometry, and I'm gonna pick triangles, because that sounds exciting. And I'm gonna make some edits now to this content. Again, I can change the title if I would like. And then what you guys are gonna see when you start to edit any of our pages is you see an editor bar that's pretty similar to you know, what you're used to with Microsoft Word or Google Docs, standard formatting here. Um, what I wanted to show you specifically is that an awesome way to customize books is to add in your own images and your own videos that are specific to, again, your district, your area, or even your own classroom. So if I wanted to add in an image below triangles, you can insert edit image here. I would choose a file from my computer, I would press insert, and you guys would see a picture. You know, maybe it's a photo of my dog, maybe it's triangles out, you know, in the real world. Whatever photos you might wanna include, your own or ones that you found that are, are license compliant, you can put them into your page here, okay? You can also add in multimedia. So insert edit media. For many people, this is a video that's perhaps on YouTube or Vimeo, but we are using the embed code and anything that has an embed code should be able to play nicely with um, this page. So we recently have some teachers who maybe have uh, created a lot of presentations in Google Slides. Um, if you didn't know it, your Google Slide presentation, it has an embed code. And so you can paste that embed code here and your Google Slides would show up on your CK12 page. So all of that's to say that, again, you can use the images, multimedia to really personalize your book. Um, you math and science folks are probably going to need to use our math editor at some point. Um, we do have a way for you to type in equations. Um, we use LaTeX coding. You might also need to use some of our drop down menu options to create your equations. Um, this is a helpful button here if you are using the math editor and you need a little more information about it. There's a how to use the math editor button here to make it really easy for you. And in fact, anytime you get stuck, you see this help option up here at the top that will take you to help resources on our site to get you on the right track. So with this ability to customize Flexbooks, you may choose to replace your lecture by having students use our concept collection Flexbooks that contain practice questions directly embedded in the content instead. Um, this can certainly help with engagement. Um, some other things we're hearing that are kind of exciting that I'm not sure if you guys have thought about is that a student could build a book as well. Um, students can press customize on a book and they can add in their own resources. And there's a lot of potential here of maybe all of the students start with your teacher created book, but instead they press customize and at the end of every chapter, 
they're adding in their own notes, their own summaries, their own reflections. Maybe you're asking them to find articles and resources that they pull into their own books. Um, students create, could create their own videos. They could be recap videos or um, something that's more like a real world application showing real world examples. And they could pull those into their own student books as well. So just, just a thought to throw that out there. Um, hopefully that gave you just a few ideas of the capabilities of our Flexbooks. Um, why don't we pause for a minute and see what questions are out there. So Lindsay, just if you can show, we have a question on where the math editor is. If you can just click on that X again. So it's right in the toolbar. Um, and actually just dismiss that for a second and like hover over it. So there's our math editor just with the rest of the tools. Um, so you can do that. And then I think I can answer these other ones without specifics on here. So if you want to pull up the keynote while I go through a couple of these, we'll be good. Sure. Yeah, great. Um, so we have questions on searching for a book that meets NGSS. Um, you can use our standard search on the homepage um, to do that part. Um, we also, as I said, are in the process of developing some really exploratory books as well as just kind of the content aligned books for NGSS. So keep your eye out for that over the course of the next little while. Um, and then we had a question about the offline reader there. Does it download the book for the student or teacher? It using Chrome actually does. You can download by chapter or by a whole book. Um, and that allows students, if you just click on it when you're exploring, it'll pop up that reader and you can look at it that way. Um, and then we had a question about Flexbooks being reviewed or vetted. Um, so we keep all of our core CK12 content separate. So that's why we have our textbooks and Flexbooks. But if you're on a concept page or in search, you'll see a community contributed tab. Um, we have over 100 and I want to say like 50,000 variations of our textbooks on our site and there are 30 of us. So we do not vet every single textbook for accuracy within there. Um, so if you want to review the vetted content, stay within CK12 content. Um, if you want to go exploring beyond that, by all means, feel free to vet it yourself. Um, we're getting some other kind of questions as we go in here um, on little nitty gritty specifics. So we're going to try to wrap up some of the core content and then we'll make sure to stay on and answer all of those last little specific questions as we go. Um, but I'm going to have Lindsay take over from here for another minute. Yeah, so maybe this is the part that everybody's been anticipating is this last section where we want to talk just a little bit about creating assignments for your math and science classes. So um, Katie's going to show you CK12 class groups and assignments. And there's lots that you can do with this. Um, we've done webinars where we spent just the full hour on assignments. So again, this is just going to be a little taste and then we're going to have you do some exploring on your own. Um, with this, but we're going to talk about groups, practices and quizzes, and LMS integration. Great. So I think with that, I'm going to steal this screen back from here. Um, and we're going to go into practice just briefly for a little bit. Um, so if we look here, you can see kind of exploring a couple of different options. Um, but we've had some questions already about assigning content. So in order to do that, you're going to be wanting to use a CK12 class group so that you can see the progress for your students as you work your way through. Um, and from here, you can just click on groups or on dashboard for groups. And this plus sign allows you to create a new group. So I could go in and this, we're retiring study groups shortly. So I would just kind of stay away from there until we retire them. Um, but the class is really the part that you want for making assignments. Um, and the, the strategy that I have for kind of breaking that up is that you can create classes that don't cleanly match your current classes. So maybe you create a whole class. So maybe this is my algebra class, or I could create a, let's say, section A for a particular component within there. Um, I generally would say don't put all of your students from morning till evening in the same class because then you'll have hundreds of kids floating through the same piece. Um, but definitely think about different ways that you could break it up so that each class could assign different content and support students who may need additional or modified resources as they work their way through. Um, I'm gonna just go into a class that I already have open and functioning so I can access that as well. And you'll see the different parts of here. So another strategy is to use this Q&A part. So we have Q&A available here. And you could actually post a question. So we had talked about projectile motion earlier. Maybe what do you think about projectile motion? And then have students answer this within the class discussion board. 
Um, and that way, or you could have them post questions and answer other questions. Um, you can set it to anonymously post questions if you want to, or leave it as is. Um, and those setting options are found in the settings component here. Um, so definitely check out the different components of class groups. We have assignments, we have reports. Um, I'm gonna just click back over to whatever concept we were talking about before. So this is a plix. In that assign a class option right here, you'll see it here in our interactives or on the left side on our other text resources. I can assign directly to my classes in CK12. And you'll see the demo integrated grades pieces there. Or I could assign it if I integrated it with my Google Classroom directly from here. And then I would connect to Google Classroom and see the classes within Classroom there. Um, so one strategy in terms of assigning all these different pieces is that you can actually flip your classroom. You could give them the video, this Plix Interactive, a Flexbook section, whatever that is as homework using our quick assign options. Um, and then when you go into class, you could have those discussions, really problem solving options labs and other group activities so that you're not worried about all the nitty gritty little vocabulary that they might need to learn about a topic. Another great strategy is if I am a student and I'm actually gonna switch over to students for two seconds, I'm gonna pull up a different student page. So let's see if we have this right here. My students can find when they log in in their dashboard, they can find their latest assignments. So let's say a student was absent, they could actually go through and say, oh, these are the assignments I missed, this is what I need to make up. They have it all in one place and they can access it from anywhere if they're traveling or, you know, on the sports team or something like that. Um, they also, another option is to have students kind of use that practice as a um, like self progress option and they could really go through and they could do their own self study. So they could explore different resources, whether they see it here within their dashboard or they would see the percentiles if they were actually exploring the content itself. So. I'm going to switch back over to the teacher screen just so we can see what that looks like. Um, and then adaptive practice. So if I go back to my home page one more time from there, I can really explore the adaptive practice options. So if I go down to here and I click on adaptive practice, if I clicked on any particular topic area, you can see on the right here different options for what I've worked on. Um, maybe in this one I haven't seen any of those pieces, so let's see if we can talk about ecology. I think we might have done some parts, but I would see percentages if I had actually tried any of those resources as we're working our way through. Or I could go into a particular topic and, oh, here we go. This one I've done some work on. But if I actually try resources, I'll see additional ways to learn. So if students have issues, they can go in, they can practice old topics that they might have missed. They can check out these new resources. If they go into practice, practice is adaptive. So what it allows them to do, it says, oh, look, you might be having trouble right now. We're gonna pop up some options. That probably means that I canceled out right when I was doing poorly and it popped up these resources. I could return to practice. I could get some hints. And the fact that our practice is adaptive means that students can fill in holes. They can get that extra resource. You could use practice as a warm up or an exit ticket. Um, and then you could even have students kind of go through and say, okay, this area I struggled with, what does that look like? And if I go back out, this report here that I'm seeing as a student is something that you see as a teacher as well. So you could sit down with a student and say, let's talk about how you did. You spent eight minutes on this assignment. Your skill level is not great. So that means you probably were getting a bunch wrong and then one or two right and a bunch wrong and one or two right. So maybe we could go through that a little more. Maybe you need to work on this. And actually, let's look at the actual questions. So you got zero of the hard questions right, a bunch of the easier questions right. So yeah, you're, you're getting some of the core content, but maybe we want to go through and explore it a bit more as we go through. So just keep in mind that you can use both the practice as a teaching tool, as well as the reports that they see. And then if I go back to my groups tab, so I just had this open here, I could look at reports and I could actually see how a student did on any one of these options. So you'll see here, 30, 10% as we work our way through. Um, Katie, so you all, 
Go ahead. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Um, you have you have a couple of people who've asked if you can see the same progress if you're logging in through one of their LMSs. Looks like we've got a couple school G users. Of, will they see the same report going through their learning management system? So Schoology would get what you're seeing right now, which is your percentages for those pieces. Um, if you're in Canvas or you're in Google Classroom, you can actually access the full score, score report that I just showed you. Um, Schoology's, Schoology's integration doesn't currently allow us to share the entire report and only the grade percentages. Um, so right now, that's what you'll be seeing in Schoology. This is a practice, so you see a percent. If it was an interactive or a read or something like that, you would see a complete or incomplete. Um, did they access it and start exploring it and kind of going from there as you worked? Did that answer your question? Well, we will find out here. There's, I think there's a lot of kind of LMS questions, which again, for the sake of time, um, we're probably gonna direct you to some links, or again, we'll stay on after. We're gonna, we're gonna wrap up in about five minutes, but then we will stay on after and answer any of these questions that are more specific to your situation um, or help direct you to other resources. Cool, I wanna go through just a couple more strategies for using practice. Um, so one is this idea of customizing. You'll see it here if you're accessing practice this way or sometimes on the left side if you're accessing it almost like a read from a concept page. But if I click customize, I can actually go through and pick the particular questions I want for this topic. And I can even add my own questions. Um, and so a really cool idea that we've had is to have students write questions and a teacher could put them into our system and then you could create a quiz with a bunch of multiple choice questions or highlighting questions, our drag and drop is a categorizing option. Um, but then the students actually create these question types and you could use them as a unit review or even a quiz if you wanted to do that and put it together for students. Um, and then just kind of one of the last notes on this particular piece is, I know a lot of teachers have worked on comp competency-based learning. Um, and this is a great option for you to say, here are your concepts and your categories. We're gonna assign different components that you need to work your way through. And then when you've mastered those skills and gotten a significant level on that practice, that's when we'll mark that as complete um, for that particular part. So super high level, quick strategy version. Um, but I think what we'll do is let Lindsay take this back over and do some wrap up. Yeah, and we have we'll stay we on have a lot of resilient questions. We have a lot of people saying, thank goodness this is being recorded, you know. Again, I'm, I'm hoping that you're excited about what we're showing you today. And this is such a tiny little piece of what CK12 offers that we're gonna count on you guys to doing some, you guys to do some exploring on your own. And then again, go to ck12.org slash webinars. And you're gonna find that we have like hour long webinars maybe on the piece that you're looking for. If you're most intrigued about Flexbooks or most intrigued about uh, groups and practice or you know, you need more information about your learning management system, we have resources for you. Um, so let me here and, and wrap up for the next three or so minutes. Um, this page actually is a pretty good page that I would direct you to, um, ck12.org slash overview. These little plus signs expand and you can learn more about Flexbooks, concept-based learning, adaptive practice, and then there's, there's three or four other categories underneath there. This this will show you kind of concisely all of the things that we talked about today, what we offer, and then here are some of your, your teachers and students talking about what those tools mean for them and their specific situation. We also have a brochure that you can download, a little flyer if you're wanting to share CK12 with others. Um, I, I do wanna reference that our cafe is one of our options. This is a great place to continue the conversation, to network with other CK12 users, or even to get some support. Um, if you see cafe on your screen, that's gonna take you to this discussion form. Um, we've got one just for educators, and we have some state-specific ones as well. Um, we have two more webinars for this, U.S. school year um, before we start talking about our certified educator program. So if you want to know more about customizing adaptive practice and assignments, uh, creating quizzes, learning more about reports, we're going to do that on May 9th at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Okay, then we have an everything CK12, which will largely be a review of the different areas that we covered today. But some of you sound like you would be up for, for seeing a lot of this information again. That's everything CK12 May 22nd. 
Um, Katie and I are really excited because we run the Certified Educator Program in the summer. We ran one last summer and certified a lot of educators. And this page is live right now. In your footer, you will see the Certified Educator Program. Um, we have information about the program. We've got you know, frequently asked questions. We've got a little video featuring some of our certified educators. You can click on an alumni tab and you could filter by location, see who's near you. But these are all folks who completed our program last year and have the title CK12 Certified Educator. Um, our first kind of soft launch registration is open. Um, I encourage you all right now when you get off this webinar to go to the Certified Educator page that you can access in our footer and fill out this information and register for program information. This gets you on our email list. This makes sure that um, you get all information relating to the Certified Educator program. And then sometime next month, we are releasing the actual schedule of the live webinars, the specific days and times they're offered um, so that you guys can start thinking about getting certified as CK12 certified educators. So um, go to ck12.org slash certified for more information about that. Um, it's mainly going to take place July, July 2018. We try to make it, make it fairly flexible for you guys. So um, hope that a lot of you will join us for that. Um, we do always ask for some feedback. If you have just a few seconds, um, I think Katie, if you can put this in the chat, uh, chat window, we have a tinyurl.com CK12 webinar 18. Um, we would love to get your feedback on how we can improve, um, what we could do differently next time to um, better maximize our time together on these webinars. And again, um, we're so appreciative that you guys are here today. We really want to give you the support that you need. If you have follow-up questions, um, you need some additional support, uh, we have a great help team. Email support at ck12.org and you will get the help that you need. Um, we're also on the social media. If you want to, at CK12 Foundation, um, particularly Twitter, hashtag CK12, that's all great. So. If you need to go and your questions have been answered, thanks for joining us today. We will see you again in the future. Um, otherwise, if you want to stay on for a few minutes, Katie's going to start clearing out the Q&A, um, and we're going to answer any questions that you all still have. Great. OK. Um, let me see if I can answer some of these questions. I've been trying to type some answers as you went through. Um, but I'm going to. Answer this first question. We had a question of if you need groups if using Schoology. If you're using a learning management system that's integrated with CK12, such as Schoology or Canvas, you don't also need groups in CK12. You're going to um, be able to access that content within that learning management system and assign and see progress within there. If you're looking to see progress in CK12, you need to create a group in CK12. Um, we had a bunch of other questions about practice that's not surprisingly why we have two full hour webinars on practice, um, but I think I just stole the content back, uh, the screen back, so hopefully you can see this. Um, we had questions on customizing practice and getting to practice. Um, I'm gonna walk through that. I know it was super fast. Um, I just wanted to show you kind of thoughts on strategies within this, but let me show you once again how to get there. So you can access practice two different ways. You could access it by clicking on a concept, by clicking on a particular topic area, and then by clicking on the matching practice icon that goes with that, and that would take you to that practice, and you could preview it from here or assign it to your class from there. You can also customize from here or create new questions from here. So this is one place if you're accessing it within a concept. If you otherwise wanna go ahead and access it from the practice icon, you could go down, scroll down on the home page. This is true for teachers, for students, and then click on adaptive practice. And that will take you to all of these areas. And notice that we have practice for grades one through five. That's for math right now. Um, and then we have higher level kind of math and science options from here. And so if I went into any one of them, let's say trig, I could open a topic and access that practice that way. If I start customizing it, I would either pull it from the left side or pull it from this customize button right here. And that's where I start creating a quiz. Now, we had some questions about kind of that customizing piece. If I click on edit, at the top I have the option to add questions. I could also add those questions from the original kind of practice page I saw from there. 
Um, and then just clicking on there, we get to, it'll open our question editor. If I created a demo question, anything you create on CK12, whether that's adding a section to a textbook or a new question to a quiz, will show up at the bottom and then you just drag it wherever you want it to be. Um, so if you are interested in doing more of this customization, definitely join us for our next webinar because I will go into this in super specific detail because there's a ton of little pieces and we could be here for an hour um, to explore all those parts. We have a question about creating a quiz with a larger set of questions and having the quiz randomly select a subset of them. I think that is the number one requested practice question I have gotten this year in schools as I worked my way around the country. And it has thus been passed along as one of the highest priorities for requests for practice to our development team. Um, so at this point in time, you have two options. You can use our adaptive practice or you can set your own quiz requirements. Um, and if I go back here, you'll see I can set the number of questions within here. I can actually pick and choose the questions I want by clicking on them, or I could just have it pick a number of questions. But I'm fixing the questions themselves. You lose the adaptive component if you choose to make a quiz, because we wouldn't want to override your choices if you're making that quiz. Um, can I use the math editor when I make a question? Yes, that math editor is also available in the question editor tool, in the toolbar, just like it was within the other editor. Um, we have questions about accessing content in other areas such as Nearpod. I have not currently tried to use our content in Nearpod. Um, you can, you have an URL that you could potentially work with. Um, if you're trying to pull content into our site with embed options, you just need the embed code. Um, so I would say, please feel free to try it out and definitely email us and let us know how it worked. Um, and we can see what we can do to support you in, if you're trying to use our content in other platforms. Um, and we had a question on making content from a textbook that you're using elsewhere. Our license, once again, um, is if you have any questions about our license and our terms of use, at the very bottom, our terms of use are listed right here. You can access those and you can find out more information about what you can and can't do on our site. The biggest thing that Lindsay noted is that our license is Creative Commons CCBYNC. It's a non-commercial attribution license. And so anything you're using on our site has to fit within that license. I've had teachers say, well, what about this? And what about this? And what about this? I do not know the licensing requirements of every image and text and component that you might possibly choose to use within our site. Um, it is your responsibility to find out if you have permission to use that within our license on CK12. Um, but anything you create yourself or anything that you're customizing from us, you're welcome to use and make within our site. Um, and, and then it's available to other users under that CCBYNC license. Um, but definitely check the source that you're pulling content from to make sure that you can use it within our license. So. Katie, the only other question I'm seeing uh, in chat is from one of our certified educators. Thank you for being certified. That's exciting. Um, saying, I've been doing the monthly webinars during the summer. Are you showing new webinars or the ones you've done recently that I've already done? Um, why don't you again show them how to access the page that we have up right now? This is just basic program information as we finalize the summer's schedule. Um, Jennifer, to answer your question, um, if you are already certified, there's going to be a few new sessions that we're offering this summer, but we are not offering at this time like a next level certification. If you're certified, your certification is valid for a few years. Um, you might be interested in attending. We're going to do kind of an, an updates of, um, what do we call it, Katie? Brush up, um, a brush up, uh, kind of a catch up of what maybe has changed on our site and what we think is most important to remind our certified educators of from last year. And then we're also going to do a few different things with like regional chats where uh, we're trying to put regions together and let them have an open discussion about how they're using CK12. Uh, we're going to handle learning management systems a little bit differently. So um, we'll make sure that we send our certified educators more information as all that opens up. Yeah, I think the two longer like one hour webinars that weren't available last summer are one that we're doing on our Common Core and NGSS books that are coming out. Um, 
you, some of you, if you're math teachers, might have joined us for the CCSS one that Laramie did, kind of demoing what that was going to look like. More of those will be available by the summer, so we'll go into that a bit more and preview some of our NGSS stuff as well. Um, and then we have one targeted for non-STEM teachers. So I'm assuming most of you guys are math and science teachers based on the title of this, but we definitely want to kind of talk about options for using our platform for other areas as well. So um, I think with that, we've plowed through all of the questions that you guys have. Um, it looks like we've answered them. There's no more in our Q&A. Um, you are always welcome to email support or jumpstart at ck12.org and we will address other questions. Um, I will be sure to send out the follow-up email tomorrow and include the link to that strategies page um, so you can check that out as well and kind of review some of those ideas just to get you thinking about how you can use CK12 in your class. Um, so with that, we thank you all for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you again in the future.